somebody shout hallelujah you are welcome to the 13th week of for the first quarterly review of our Sunday school today November 26 2023 may the Lord bless you as you come in Jesus name shall we pray our father in heaven we bless your holy name for this morning we thank you for all you have done in our life thank you for bringing us sound and safe Father, we are here to learn at your feet. Teach us by yourself in Jesus' name. And the grace to be the doers of your word. Father, give it to each and every one of us today in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Praise the Lord. You are welcome once again to the, quarterly, the first quarterly review. We are in, we have, so far we have been able to cover 12 lessons. And uh, the, the first lesson is the omnipresence of God. And second lesson, Theophany. The third, Christian faith. Fourth, Christian worship. The fifth lesson, the shepherd and his sheep. Sixth, the origin of sin. Seventh, biblical description of sin. Eighth, understanding repentance. Nine, being born again, part one. Lesson 10, being born again, part two. Lesson 11, the world system. And lastly, lesson 12, placing God. I pray as we go into the lesson, into the review, the Lord Almighty will bless all of us and meet us at that very point of our needs in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Lesson one. That is the omnipresence, omnipresence of God. Omnipresence of God. We have to outline there the biblical evidence always and always with us. Our memory verse was taken from Hebrews 4.13. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Hebrews 4. 13. There are so many biblical evidences. For instance, Adam and Eve acknowledged the presence of God in the Garden of Eden. You will see that in Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. Then God walked in the camp of the Israelites. You will also see that in Deuteronomy 23, verse 14. Then we move to the second outline, which is Theophany. We have two outlines there in Theophany. The first one, categories and biblical instances. And the second one, the incarnation of Christ. Our memory verse was taken from Exodus chapter 34, verse 5. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. The categories and biblical instances, there are so many uh, instances in the Bible where you see the word theophany. Theophany is a visible or tangible manifestation of God in its most restrictive sense. It is a visible appearance of God in the Old Testament period, often but not always in human form. Then we move to lesson, lesson three, the Christian faith. The Christian faith. Our Bible passage in Christian faith is Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18 to 20. Then the memory verse is taken from Romans 5, 8. It says, but God commanded his love toward us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for us when we were yet sinners. And we need to pay him back by obeying his commandment, obeying his word, doing his will at all times. 
then we have to outline there more than a religion and a call to a relationship. It's more than a, a religion. The Christian faith is more than a religion. Simply put, religion is the belief in and worship of a superwoman with controlling power, especially a personal god or gods. You see that in Exodus 34, verse 14. We move to lesson four. That is Christian worship. Christian worship. A Bible passage there was taken from John 4, verse 19 to 24. And the memory verse was taken from Psalm 95, verse 6. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Christian worship. Then the outline was divided into two. Preparing for worship. Acceptable worship. What is worship? Worship is an act of paying homage that involves deep respect, reverence, adoration, and showing sincere love to a supreme being. When you worship God, you worship him wholeheartedly, not just with the, only the words of your mouth. In your character, in everything that you do, you worship your God. And uh, the outline, outline one says, preparing for worship. Preparing for worship. Before moving into external act of worship, there is the need for us to put our hearts in order. If your heart is not in order and you are worshiping God, you just be saying what is not. You need to put your heart in order, in order to have a good worship to the God Almighty. Acceptable worship. Acceptable worship. Not all worship is acceptable to God. There are times you think you are worshiping God, but the, the motive behind your worship or the, your character towards that worship is, is, is unacceptable to God. You need to search yourself. As I'm worshiping God, is it acceptable? What I'm doing, is it the right thing that I'm supposed to do? There are, there are types of worship. There are vain worship. This is based on lip service and not from the act. Then we have, there is an ignorant worship. Ignorant worship, it refers to worship without the knowledge of God, of who God is and how he should be worshipped. Then will or self-impose worship. It just, let me just worship him because they ask us to worship him. Will or self-impose worship. It refers to satisfy personal will and desire instead of carrying out God's instruction. Then we move to lesson five. The shepherd and his sheep. The shepherd and his sheep. Psalm, our Bible passage is in Psalm 23, verse 1 to 6. Then the memory verse was taken from Psalm 100, verse 3. Psalm 100, verse 3. Know ye that the Lord he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. The outline was divided into two. The believer as a sheep. God as the shepherd. In Psalm 23, is an expression of our confidence and trust in the Lord. Each verse reveals the close relationship David shared with God. Metaphorically, David portrays God, portrays God as a loving shepherd. This is because being a shepherd himself, he knows what it means to cater for the flocks. The imagery of God as the shepherd is common throughout the Old and New Testament. Therefore, every believer should understand the place of God in their lives. We need to understand the place of God in our life as our shepherd. And we are the sheep. We are the sheep of his pasture. Then we move to lesson six, the origin of sin. The origin of sin. The Bible passage was taken from Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 13 to 15. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 13 to 15. And the memory verse was taken from Psalm 51, verse 5. Psalm 51, verse 5. Behold, I was sharpened in iniquity, and the sin did my mother conceive me. Sin and evil are was often used interchangeably because both are similar in meaning. The age-old question of where and how sin began has been exploited and debated by some of the greatest minds in history, and their findings have helped a great deal in improving our understanding. However, there is no better place to discover the truth about this subject than in the authoritative manual of God, the Bible 
We need to, be, to move more closer to our Bible. We need to read our Bible on a daily basis. We need to, to, to digest the word that we are reading so that we'll be able to know which one is right and which one is, is wrong. Then the outline is divided into two. Rebunking the maths about sin. And the sin is a deficiency. Sin is a deficiency. Rebunking the maths about sin. So I'm quoting Isaiah 45, 7. Seek to make God the author of sin. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. The Lord do all these things. However, the King James Version, version word evil from the ori original Hebrew, ra, is better translated as calamity. The context of this passage concerns God's sovereignty over natural disasters. God is sovereign over all things. You see this in Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. Sin is a deficiency. That's the second outline. Evil is not a created thing. It is not a creature and has no independent being. Also, evil has no standard as goodness does. It is a lack, a deficiency, and a falling short of the standard of God's perfect goodness. We move to lesson seven, biblical description of sin, biblical description of sin. Our memory verse was taken from 1 John 3, 4. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law, for sin is the transgression of the sin. Our outline is divided into two types of sin, redemption from the penalty of sin. Then we move to lesson eight, understanding repentance. The Bible passage was taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 9 to 10. And the memory verse, Acts 3, 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. We have to outline there the convicting work of the Holy Spirit, the final product. And then we move to lesson nine. Be born again, part one. The memory verse was taken from 1 Peter 1.23. Be born again, not of corruptible seed, but of corruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. And the outline were divided into two, a sanctified life, a spirit-controlled life. I pray that God himself will be the one that will control our life in Jesus' name. Then we move to lesson 10, being born again, part two. The memory verse was taken from Romans 8.30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate them, he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, then he also glorified. We have to outline there a justified life, assurance of salvation. We need to check our life. Are we living the way that Lord wants us to live our life? Our life, is it exactly when somebody sees us, would they say this one is a born again Christian or this one is not born again Christian? We need to check our life. We need to, we need to minister to ourselves. As we are reading the word of God, we should allow the word to digest. We should allow the word to have an impact in our life. The Bible says by their fruits we shall know them. Then we move to lesson 11, the word system. The memory verse was taken from 1 John 2, 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And we have to outline there, Satan's world system, God has new world. Then we move to lesson 12, pleasing God, pleasing God. The memory verse was taken from 1 Thessalonians 4, 1. Furthermore then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as he have received of us, how he ought to walk and to please God, so he would abound more and more. Then the outline was divided into two, walking in the spirit, living by faith and obedience. May the Lord bless his words in our hearts in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for your word. We appreciate you for all you have done today. Father, we pray on the last day. Don't allow this word to, to lead us to hell. Let it lead us to heaven in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Praise the Lord. We worship you. We
Wherever you are, get up on your feet and dance. Where are my praises? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Shake up, shake up, shake up, shake up, shake up, shake up. Come on, give God a praise.
Hallelujah. We want to appreciate the Almighty God for keeping us alive and for bringing us into His presence again to be blessed. I want us to lift up our hands and appreciate God, the Almighty God, the Living God, our Maker, our Redeemer, our Savior. Let's appreciate Him for giving us life. Let's appreciate him for blessing us. Let's appreciate him for divine preservation. Let's appreciate him for divine blessings. Let's give him glory, honor, adoration due unto him. Give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration. Bless him from your heart for all that he has done for us. The psalmist says we should bless the Lord at all times. Bless him. Worship him. Give him glory. Give him honor. Because he's here again to bless you. That you are alive today is not by your own power. It is by his mercy. The Bible tells us that it is by the mercies of God that we have not been consumed. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have given thanks. Everlasting Father, we thank you. Our Lord and our Redeemer, we want to appreciate you for all that you have done for us. From January till now, you have kept us alive. Thank you for divine provision. Despite what the nation is passing through, you are still meeting with our needs. We thank you. We bless your name. We worship you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. To you be glory, Lord, forever in Jesus' name. Thank you for our daddy, the general overseer of RCCG. Thank you for our mommy. Thank you for your strength in their lives. Thank you, Lord, for keeping them. Thank you for encouraging them. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your grace that is keeping them going. Blessed be your name, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you for our family members. We thank you for the church members. We appreciate you everlasting father thank you for our nations we bless your name for your peace we thank you glory be to your name in jesus name we are here again to be blessed father please we pray you will empower our daddy this time oh god and you will release the blessings of your word upon our lives and you will give us the grace oh god to be doers of the word in the name of Jesus. We ask, O oh God, that as you send up, as you send out your word this season, your word will meet with our needs. Your word, O oh God, will bless us tremendously. And at the end of today, we shall give all glory to you. Continue to strengthen our daddy in the mighty name of Jesus. Continue to empower your church. Continue to bless your church. Continue to fight for your church in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name, O God. For in Jesus' victorious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you. Let somebody shout a big hallelujah. We thank God for what God is doing, especially in this series. Because I don't know about you, but I keep moving and moving into a higher ground. No wonder when Isaiah was talking in the book of Isaiah chapter 55, uh, when we read from verses 10 and 11, verses 10 and 11, was talking about the word of God that will never return unto him void. Every word that is sent out, they will carry additional blessing back to where it 
was sent from. So the spoken word is very powerful. Powerful, it can penetrate through any hard substance. And I want you to get yourself ready for another encounter. Because each time we we'll sit with the word of God, we have an encounter with God. And when you have an encounter with God, situation changes. Your story we encounter his glory and there will be change of story. And that's what I have come for. And I know that's what you are, you are ready for. Uh, my father in the Lord, God has prepared him and is ready to download the tangible code from heaven above. My prayer is that you will not listen, you will not partake of the word in vain. And it shall be so for me also. I will invite Pastor Kule Ajayi to bring Adadi, the general overseer of the redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E. Adeboe, to the podium. God bless you. Of spring. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up all the hands in one accord. Singing. Blessed be the name, hallelujah. Blessed be the name, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Faithful, faithful is the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adore. So we lift up all the hands in one accord, singing faithful is a name, hallelujah, 
Faithful is the name, hallelujah. Faithful is the name of the Lord. Jesus, Jesus is the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up holy hands in one accord, singing Jesus is the name. Hallelujah, Jesus is the name, hallelujah, Jesus is the name of the Lord. Father Almighty, we bless your name. Thank you because your name is faithful. Your name is Amen. You are the way, the truth and their life. You are the unchangeable changer. You are the covenant keeping God. You are so reliable. It's impossible for you to fail. We worship you. That we have a reliable God for our Father. Covenant keeping God. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Our Father and our God, we trust you for all the promises you have made to us. Those of them that are yet to be fulfilled, Father, fulfill today. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, you may want to greet one or two people and say, God will be faithful to you. Uh, God will be faithful to you. And then you may please be seated. We are now moving to part 31 in our series For Whom the Heaven Opens. And we'll be looking at Joshua chapter 6 from verse 26 to 27. Joshua 6, 26 to 27. And Joshua adjured them at that time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord that rises up and buildeth this city Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn. And in his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame was noised throughout all the country. We've learned about the danger of ingratitude, that if we are ungrateful, we are placing ourselves under a curse. We've learned about the power of gratitude that, among other things, if you are grateful, God will bless you beyond expectations. We have learned that our God is a covenant keeper, and we, his children, must also be covenant keepers. And whenever we make a promise, we must fulfill the promise. Today we'll come again uh, across something very uh, somehow maybe a little bit disturbing. We see Joshua placing a curse on whoever will rise up to rebuild the city of Jericho. And as you will find out, the moment he pronounced the curse, the city became cursed. It took several years down the line for Elisha 
to come to Jericho to break this curse. A curse is a very, very powerful force. As a matter of fact, you probably have learned that probably the two most powerful forces on earth will be a curse or a blessing. I'm praying for those of you who are listening to me today that if there's any curse upon you or your family, may the curse be destroyed today. Amen. Well, I said this place is a bit disturbing because it leads us to the question, can a Christian curse, can a Christian pronounce a curse. So we'll be digging deep today as we remind ourselves one more time that there is a time for everything. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 from verse 1 to 8. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 8. There's a time for everything. As a child of God, you need to know there is a time to be a lamb. Following the example of the Lord Jesus Christ himself, who is, of course, our number one example. John chapter 1, verse 29. John 1, verse 29. John said, Behold the Lamb of God. Who to get away the sins of the world? Jesus definitely was a lamb. John 1 29. As a matter of fact, in John chapter 10, if you read from verse 17 to 18, John 10, 17 to 18, Jesus Christ said, ah, I laid down my life. Nobody took it from me. In other words, when they came to crucify him, and he told Peter, he said, I could, I could have told my father to say a legion of angels, and all these people would have been wiped out. But uh, I laid down my life. After all, I'm a lamb. But there is also a time to be a lion. <laughs> When you read Revelation chapter 5, from verse 5 to 6, Revelation 5, 5 to 6, ah, the Bible spoke about the lion of Judah. When he was talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Even while he was see here on earth, in Matthew 21, from verse 12, to 13, Matthew 21, 12 to 13. The Bible tells us when he entered the temple and he saw those who were buying and selling there, oh, the lion came forth. He whipped them, overturned their tables. It wasn't the lamb that was doing that. It was the lion. So there is a time for every Christian to be as gentle as a dove. Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. Matthew 10, verse 16. The Lord said, I'm sending you forth into danger. So I want you to be gentle as a dove. But as wise as a serpent. So there's a time to be gentle as a dove. But beloved, there is a time to resist even the devil. 
as a time when the lion in you must roar. In James chapter 4, verse 7, James 4, verse 7, the Bible made it clear. If you have submitted to God, you're a child of God, hey, you must stand and fight the devil. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. So there's a time to be as gentle as a dove. There is a time to be a resistor, even of the devil. There is a time to be a worshiper. John chapter 4, from verse 23 to 24. John 4, 23 to 24. God says, God is a spirit. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. There's a time when you are to be in church, worshiping God, praising him, lifting up your hands to the almighty God, singing, dancing beautifully. But there is a time to be a mountain mover, You, dancing just now, uh, leading worship, leading the choir. It's a time when you, can, you have to be a mountain mover. Mark 11, verse 23. Mark 11, verse 23. You, the time when you, you, you the same choir master, worship leader. Well, at the moments when you stand and tell Monty, move, move. I mean, <laughs> for example, in Acts chapter 13, from verse 6 to 12, Acts 13, 6 to 12, Paul was preaching, and there was this sorcerer disturbing Gentle Apostle Paul commanded that the sorcerer be blind for a season. I've always said, I wonder why he had it for a season. Because that fellow would have died blind. And then they moved the mountain out of the way and the governor gave his life to Jesus Christ. Are we to bless a witch in the church? Are we to bless someone who is trying to hinder the work of God? I'm not quite sure. There's a time to be emotional, gentle, meek, sympathetic. Romans chapter 12, verse 15. Romans 12, verse 15. says we are to weep with those who weep. I went to comfort one of my sons. Some years ago, lost his wife, years before, remarried, and then lost the second wife. Well, went there, encouraged him, etc., etc., and it was time to go. And I first of all went with sorrow. And I burst into tears. Uh, and people were began to say, ah, Daddy, Daddy, you shouldn't be crying. Uh, leave me alone. So then Jesus himself cried. At a time like that, when you, uh, uh, when you feel for somebody who has gone through a major tragedy, you weep. 
It's acceptable. That we weep with those who weep. But there is a time to rebuke. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17. Isaiah 54, verse 17 say, Hey, no weapon fashioned against you will prosper. Let he say it to you. Hmm. Any tongue that rises up against you in judgment. He didn't say smile at him. He said, thou shalt rebuke. There's the Bible who says so. You must compare scriptures with scriptures. Scriptures with scriptures. <laughs> there is a time to raise the dead. It's a time to raise the dead. In Acts chapter 19, in Acts chapter 9, from verse 36 to 41, Acts 9, 36 to 41, Dorcas died. Dorcas was a very great woman, very generous, taking care of the needy. And they came to tell Apostle Peter, we've lost a great benefactor. Help us. Bible tells us Peter went with them. When, she, when he got there, the people were there weeping, showing him all the, the, the great work that this woman had done. And you know the rest of the story? He, he went in did what the Lord Jesus Christ did in the house of uh, Jairus, drove um, out all the mourners, followed the example of Jesus, and brought Dorcas back to life. It's a time to raise the dead. <laughs> but whether you believe it or not, there's a time to kill. The same Peter in Acts chapter 5, from verse 1 to 11, Acts 5, 1 to 11, killed husband and wife in one, shall we say, one Sunday service. <laughs> husband came. And lied. And Peter decreed his death. The wife came and lied again, compromising or in cooperation with her husband. And the same Peter said, Go and join your husband in hell. There are times and times. Time to raise the dead, time to kill. Remember, it is written in Matthew 15, verse 13. Matthew 15, verse 13. Jesus Christ said, Every plant my father did not plant shall be rooted up. I decree today, every plant that God has not planted in your life shall be rooted up. It's a time to kill. Some of you remember the story of one lady who was a big demon possessed who suddenly came and said, I am a husband. And, uh, How can I be your husband? I'm happily married. I'm a preacher. She said, we're joking. I mean, she came face to face to my wife and told her, you won't let me marry him. I will kill you. <laughs> I called her husband, called the family. She wouldn't yield. 
We involved the senior officer of the police. They had to tell her never to come to the camp here again. She wouldn't stop. She wouldn't change. And then I traveled to London. In those days, there were no mobile phones. As I was entering the house where I was going to say the phone rang, and who was on the other side, on the other end of the line? This a woman. Say welcome. Ah, who are you? So, ah, you don't know my voice. He said, I'm in the next bus stop. I will soon be with you. Ah. So I knew I have a problem. Of course, I told her, you come here, the police will pick you up. And then I turned to God. God, what am I going to do? What, 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 what is going on? Here is somebody. And I didn't tell anyone I was going to London. How did she know? And the Almighty God said, as long as we allow the mountain to stay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I decree that mountains will move. They brought her back to Nigeria in a coffin. I decree today every mountain in the life of every child of God listening to me today, the mountain will move. Yeah. There is a time to ignore a fool. Proverbs 26, verse 4. Proverbs 26, verse 4. He says, uh, uh, don't answer a fool. So just ignore him. But the same Proverbs chapter 26, verse 5. <laughs> the next verse. Proverbs 26, verse 5, say, you better answer a fool. Or he may think he's wise. So occasionally you have to deal with a fool. And deal with a fool very firmly. You remember during the con last convention that I asked you to pray prayer. When some fools began to talk about me using the demonic powers. That if I'm lying, if I'm cheap, if I'm pretending that God will kill me before the following money. Thank God I'm still here. But someone said, well, what are we going to do about those people who are making up? I said, I don't know. <laughs> we don't need to bother about them because God knows how to deal with false prophets. Only thing is I'm not going to beg God to be merciful to them. I just keep my mouth shut. There is a time to bless. Romans chapter 12, verse 14. Romans 12, 14. You say, oh, bless you and curse not. So there's a time to bless. No doubt about that. But you must also remember that there's a time to curse. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 14. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 14. Paul said, Alexander the Coppermith did me a lot of evil. He said, God, you will deal with him. It's there in the Bible. You must know that you are a child of the Lamb. At the same time, you are a child of a lion. In you, there is a combination. The Lamb 
and the lion. What you need to pray about is that God will let you know when to be a lamb and when to be a lion. You must constantly remember that God is love. First John chapter 4 verse 8. First John chapter 4 verse 8. God is love. But also Hebrews chapter 12 verse 29. Hebrews 12 verse 29 is also the consuming fire. So you want to ask the question. Why did Joshua curse Jericho? Because remember what he said? This city must never be rebuilt. Anyone who wants to rebuild this city he said, I cursed the fellow. He was simply saying, according to Nahum chapter 1 verse 9, Nahum chapter 1 verse 9, affliction must not arise a second time. If we have been true serious, Problems and God brings you out. You reserve the right to decree that the problem will never come again. If someone has caused you a lot of problems, learn to forgive, learn to forget. But take precaution that that fellow will never have another opportunity to give you another problem. I've said it. If I have a treasurer who steals my money, I will forgive, I will forget. But he will never be my treasurer again. I think that's what being wise as a serpent is talking about. And then you need to remember that it is whatever you allow that will be allowed in heaven. Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. Matthew 18, verse 18. As where it says, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven. Do you want another wall of Jericho across your path? Do you want another hindrance to your progress? It's up to you. If you allow it, it will be allowed. If you reject it, it will be rejected. After all, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, Proverbs 18, verse 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. It all depends on how you use it. And Job 22, verse 28, Job 22, verse 28, say you, you shall decree a thing and it will be established unto you. Like I told you during the last convention, if you command every sickness, every disease to leave your body and you mean it, the sickness, disease will obey. 
But if we allow it to stay, it's up to you. And I close with this little story. Years ago, a man was coughing very badly. And we went to pray for him. And you know what he said? Pray that this cough will be going small, small. <laughs> Why don't we command this thing to get out of here? Are, are you the one coughing? No, sir. Today, you are going to use the power of your tongue to decree that everything you don't want in your life be cursed and they get out of you. God will be, I mean, will grant your request in Jesus' name. Now, for those of you who are not born again, you are still saying in sin simply because you allow it. The devil is still using you because you allow the devil that you can make up your mind. No, devil, leave me alone. I'm going to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to light. I'm tired of darkness. And Jesus will receive you. So if you bow your head now and you cry to the Lord Jesus Christ and say, save my soul. I don't want to have anything to do with the devil anymore. He will receive you. Bow your heads and I will pray with you. My Father, my God, I want to thank you for your word. And I want to thank you for all those who are making up their mind now that they don't want to have anything more to do with sin and forces of darkness. Father, please receive them. Save their souls. Let your blood wash away their sins. Set them free from yokes of darkness. Receive them into the family of God. And I pray that from now on, the devil will stay away from them. And whenever they call on you, you will answer them by fire. As for all your children who are listening to us today, whatever they disallow today, let it be disallowed in heaven. Amen. Let only what they allow be allowed. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I rejoice with those of you who have given your life to Jesus Christ today. Please go to the nearest redeemed Christian Church of God to you. Tell the pastor I've sent you because you have given your life to Jesus, and he will tell you what to do next. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord for that inspirational word from our Father and the Lord. We thank God that again this day, the Lord has loaded us with blessings. He has sent his word to us again to his servant, and we are already highly blessed. It is time for us to show our appreciation to God by giving our offerings to the Lord. Like we learned today about causes and blessings. In 1 Kings chapter 3, from verse 3 to 15, 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 3 to 15, Solomon gave a thousand burnt offerings. His offerings attracted divine visitation and divine blessings from God, so much that during the days of Solomon, he became the most famous, the most honorable, and the richest king of his days. Today, we too have an opportunity to give an offering that will attract the visitation to us and that will attract the blessings of God upon our lives. And I want every one of us to take advantage of this as we give a very good quality and bountiful offering unto the Lord. And as we give, let us give cheerfully. Because the Bible tells us that God loves cheerful givers. The account details will be displayed right on our screens. And the choir will be singing as we give our offering unto the Lord. 
let's do it with joy. Let's do it with, 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 a, with a heart to receive from God. Because this offering today will attract blessings to us. Over to the choir. Look at me. We're about to go to the south. Come on. Everybody, let's show them how it's done in the south. Somebody say, oh yeah. Father, we want to thank you. We bless your holy name. We thank you for this great opportunity to give an offering that will attract blessings to us. And I pray, almighty God, that as many as have obeyed your word and they have given unto you, Father, let this offering be a sweet smelling savour unto you. Let it be acceptable unto you even as the offering of Solomon caused divine visitation, as a reason of this offering, let us have divine visitations. And Father, let it attract your blessings, financial blessings, blessings of miracles, blessings of signs, blessings of wonders, blessings of healings in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name, for we have prayed in Jesus' 
mighty name. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Wow. What a sumptuous meal from the table of the Lord. We really thank God for today. We want to thank the almighty God for the revelation of his word. We thank God for the power in his word. And we want to give all the glory to the Lord for all the lessons and blessings that are associated with the word. Shall we begin to bless the name of the Lord? Let us appreciate God for the revelation of his word. Let us appreciate God for all the lessons we have learned from his word. Let us appreciate God for all the blessing he has showered on us today through his word. Let us give him the glory for the way we, he has fed us with his word. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name because there is always power in your word. We give you all the glory because your word is always fresh at all times. We thank you for all the blessings you have given to us today. In Jesus' name, we have given thanks. Father Almighty, we want to thank you. We give you all the glory because you are a good God. We thank you for the way you have fed us with your word today. We thank you because there is power in your word. We thank you for revealing to us that there is time for everything. We just give you all the glory for the deeper revelation of your word. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that the grace to be gentle as dove when the time comes, release unto us in the name of Jesus and the boldness to be a resistor when we are confronting evil. The boldness to resist the devil, to resist the evil, give unto us in the name of Jesus. You have told us that whatever we allow, we, sh you, we surely come, and whatever we disallow, we not happen in our life. We pray that the grace to disallow evil release unto us at all times in the name of Jesus. And the grace to allow blessing, to allow favor in our lives. Release unto us in the name of Jesus. In your word today, you have taught us that affliction shall not arise the second time. We pray that in our lives, there shall be no more affliction. In our lives, there shall be no more trouble. In the name of Jesus, Lord, it is our prayer that all the blessings that we have packaged in your word of today shall follow us throughout the days of our lives. We pray for our Father in the Lord, the general overseer, whom you have used as a vessel unto honor. We pray that you will strengthen him, you will uphold him, you will anoint him all. We pray that your God will be profitable in our lives, and the word we have had today will make great impact in our life. Thank you because you have answered. For we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen.